All right, guys. Welcome to Laser Cases with question and answer. Brian, awesome. Hi, Brian. Greetings from Denver. Oh, that's where my family is. I love it. Great. Let's get started. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about my story. So for those of you who don't know me, I graduated in 1992 from CSU Vet School. After six years of practice, I got bored. Angela, hey, north of Houston. Great. Good to see you. Glad you could make it. Um, I fell down the stairs in 1998, hurt my back. My chiropractor couldn't fix me, so sent me to an orthopedic guy who sent me to a PT, and it was like, bing, this light bulb went off. I was like, oh my God, I can help so many dogs. I can fix these problems and then make them feel better. It's without drugs, this is great. I opened up the first rehab clinic in 1998. It was a long, long time ago. You can see here, I designed the first underwater treadmill. This is actually it. It um, was on a jet ski lift, and I learned you have to crank all the time. You get elbow tendonitis, not good. The second one I built was on a boat lift, much, much easier. I opened up the first rehab clinic. I have taught for Canine Rehab Institute for 14 years. Um, it was a lot of fun. Oh, my God. We helped thousands of, of vets, techs, and PTs and PTAs get certified and spread the word and help animals. I've taught for VIN for 13 years now, and as of just about a decade ago, I became board certified in sports in canine sports medicine and rehabilitation. So I'm one of only 116 in the world, which is really, really cool. I love what we do. I have lectured at all of the big conferences, North American, um, Western, all of them, and lots and lots of state Hey, hi, Heather. Yay. Eastern New York, New York. Yeah. Oh my gosh. My New Yorker came out with me for a minute. Um, if I grew up in New York, so I can do that. Uh, I have, I've lectured in, uh, internationally in Germany and Italy and Australia and all kinds of, I've been so blessed to go so many places. I've had interns from 17 countries. I have, um, some of these texts, well, all of these textbooks I've written chapters for lots and lots of journals. I missed the last webinar. Storm rolled through. Oh, um, we will have somebody put in the chat the link for the last webinar so you can get it, so you can still see it. There's a lot of good information in there. It wasn't as much fun. We had tech difficulties, so I had to be a little box. Um, and then I cut that out because I hate being a little box. Um, but it's good information. I was blessed to be uh, to receive the IAMS Award of Excellence in Rehabilitation. I was one of the first. And I have also been blessed to um, be the AHVMA, American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association, Holistic Practitioner of the Year, which is wonderful. And I have so much fun. I get to teach at LSU. I get to be the head of the Integrative Medicine Department for several weeks every year. It's lots and lots of fun. I get to work on hawks and camels and um, sheep and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, awesome. Okay, great. Thanks for putting the link in for the last webinar. Thanks. All right, let's get going. Oh, there you go. Link in the chat. It's in there. Um, so if you haven't seen it, Optimum Laser Techniques for Cranial Cruciate and Ligament Disease, you can get the link in the chat. We had a lot of fun. Questions. Oh, and before we start talking about the questions that I got, um, did you guys know it came out today in the IVC Veterinary um, Care Journal, uh, Laser Therapy for Musculoskeletal Disorders in Companion Animals, right? It is top news. Where can we access this link? Um, I think Evelyn is going to pop it in, or I think you can click on the little yellow button and get right to the link. You can try it. Um, or Evelyn, if you can put it in again, that would be great. All right, let's get on to some of the questions and cases. Believe it or not, all of the cases you see, I swear to God, are cases I've seen since the last webinar, right? So since since the seventh. Um, so really cool. And then all the cases have been written in. Thank you for everyone who wrote in. And we'll take more cases later on too. Um, as many questions as you want, because I love to teach. I can't not do it. So first question came from Kelly. She said, what's the best way to treat an ileus, a tight iliopsoas muscle? So I'm going to go through placement first because that's super, super important. And then we'll go through more specifics. So I have seen lots of people 
come and put the laser on the back of the dog, you're going through all of the bone to try to get down there. This muscle, so here's spinal cord, right? Here is the disc, here's the bones. The iliopsoas sits underneath just to the side of the vertebral body. So if we put our fingertips on the top of the dorsal spinous processes, so you can see where my fingers are here, and aim our laser just to the side, to the lateral aspect, to the outside of our fingertips, we're actually aiming directly at the iliopsoas muscle. And I'll show you a, video, or a picture in a little bit of how important aiming is. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come down, you're gonna feel the muscles, the intestines, because of gravity, are gonna be pushed down, and then you can push them down even further, and then put your probe right in there. Aim right just to the outside of your fingers, and you are right on it. You're also gonna follow it all the way down to just past where you can feel the femur, because the iliopsoas attaches to the femur. Haha, -ha, I remember the tech challenges at the webinar. <laughs> Rogan chat. Okay. Um, whoa! The other question from Kelly, what are the best doses? So she specifically has a SpectraVet, and she says, these are the probes I have, what are the doses? So for both the iliopsoas and CCL, it's the same dose, isn't that nice? So if you have a SpectraVet Pro 2, you're gonna use continuous wave for your large dogs and 10 hertz for your smaller dogs. If you have an 810 2000, it's gonna be 40 to 60 seconds per point, and if you have an 810 deep, 30 to 40 seconds per, per point. Remember, if you're using an 810, any laser, and you have dark skin or dark coat, you want to at least cut your dose in half and do that area twice, right? So you're gonna do half of your time. So if it's 40 seconds, you do 20 seconds, go through the whole area and then come back. Some of your lasers, you're gonna do one joule, like respond, you're gonna do one joule per point and then come back and do it as many joules as you need. If you have a 904, doesn't matter because it's not absorbed by melanin. For that, you're going to do 40 to 60 seconds per point, and then you're done. All right, first case, Waze. Waze is amazing. He's a four-year-old Border Collie who's a competitive agility dog. I see a lot of, of working dogs. They're wonderful. Very common thing I see is that when I go to keep the back straight and stretch the hamstrings, his toes didn't touch his elbow. Every dog, every breed should be able to have their back straight. Let's just show you a picture of it, right? Back straight. Here I'm stabilizing his pelvis so his lumbar spine doesn't just curve around because that's cheating. And then be able to bring his rear toes to the level of his elbow if his leg was in normal standing position. Right? His elbows, he's all curled up. He's Sid. But he's amazing. That stretches the whole hamstrings, gluteal muscles, and iliocostalis. And you say, okay, great. But ways wasn't easy. There's a lot of steps to it. So let's go through it. We want to identify what muscle is the problem. So we want to have our hand. So here, I'm taking the picture with one hand. So I usually have my hand cupped at the elbow or at the hock, like I have here. Never pull. You're always guiding. Back leg is like a clock arm. And then you're going to have your hand wrapped around his hamstrings so you can have your fingers and see which muscle. So if all of them are soft in one, except for one, and one is super, super tight, that's your problem. And it can be a totally tight muscle or it can be a trigger point. If, you're, if you have your hand wrapped around, you can feel pinkies on the gracilis, then my fingers are on the semimembranosis and semitendinosis, and then my thumb and or my pointer finger can be on the biceps femoris on the outside and the middle glute, because those are the guys that put most of your problems. If all of them have the same tension, your iliocostalis is a problem, and it's your SI joint that's not moving as well. So you laser or motion that, and you fix the problem. So what's the difference between excessively tight and trigger point? If it's excessively tight, it's the whole muscle, which means if we're lasering, we wanna laser the whole muscle. If it's a trigger point, it's a part of the muscle, and then we just have to laser that. And sometimes we laser it, and then we reassess it. 
because sometimes we get all of it and sometimes there's this tiny little spot in the middle that if we don't fix, it's going to come back. So we always want to make sure we get rid of the whole trigger point. So after we, after we treat it, and it can be with laser or massage, and because I absolutely love teaching, I want to give you a couple of massage techniques that you can use for tight muscles or trigger points, right? So if you have a tight muscle, especially if it's a long, thin one, think about if I had a rubber band and if I took it and I pulled it up, it would stretch it. And then when I brought it down, it would be the same normal length and then it would stretch. So if I have a long, thin muscle that's tight, I can take it and go up and down and up and down. Think about it like rubber band, long, short, long, short, long, short. And that causes those um, Golgi tendon organs to fire and relaxes the muscle. Now, if I have a trigger point, the easiest way to get, a, get rid of it is to do ischemic compression. So ischemia is pushing the blood out. So you say, where's the biggest part of that trigger point? And you put your pressure in. And you breathe not once. And as you exhale, you slowly push in, always within the comfort level of the dog. And then you take your thumb off or your finger. And what you'll find is most of the time, trigger point's gone, or at least it's a lot smaller. And then you find, okay, where's that little nidus? Where's that little bit of it that's causing all the problems? And you do that. And then it gets rid of it and it's gone for good. Um, also, once we get rid of the problem, we want to strengthen those muscles so that we can not have those problems, right? Why do we have trigger points and tight muscles? Over, two reasons, only two reasons, overuse or abnormal use. So if we can strengthen the muscles, we don't have those problems. I love getting my competitive dogs. I love getting all of my patients strong. How do we do that? Well, we just happen to have a course for you guys, right? So we have the Optimum Geriatric Exercise Course for Professionals. That's this one. And if you happen to be a pet parent, we have Core and More. Same exercises, different level of information. For my professionals, there's a lot of really good stuff. For my pet parents, it's simplified. So same exercises, but easier, less information, but great information that you can use. All right, let's keep going. So with Waze, we did a hamstring. And I wanted to show you this because if you're not used to looking at anatomy, um, it, it can be confusing. You're like, you put your hand where? This is how easy it is. If my hand is wrapped around, my pinky is on the gracilis right here. Then I have my semimembranosus, that's this guy, my semitendinosus, my biceps femoris. So my hand wraps around. I can feel all at once. If I come up, here's my superficial glute and my middle glute. He's the guy that's usually the problem if it's not my hamstrings. And then if he's not the problem, then I know it's the SI joint and it's my ilios iliocostalis right up there. Okay. So you fix that problem, you reassess until you get all of them done. So why was Waze different? Well, he had first a semitendinosus. Again, 90% of the time I have a problem, it's a gracilis. But if you say, oh, I'm having a problem, so all I'm going to do is laser the gracilis, you would have missed it. You had to get rid of the problem in the semitendinosus first. Then it was a gracilis, and I still didn't get full motion. I had to go ahead to the middle gluteal. So here's my biceps femoris. This is the outside of his leg. Here's my middle gluteal, way up here. Here's the top of my ilium. So got rid of all of that, and then he was good to go. He's awesome. He is amazing. All right, we had a course question from Susie. How long do I have access to the course, and what happens if I don't finish it in time? We have a full year to do that. And if that's not enough time, it's only $99 to keep going. Actually, about 70% of our students continue on, and even if they finish the course, keep it as a reference because it's only $99 a year. That's not very much, less than 10 bucks a month. All right, let's talk about Maggie. Maggie is a 10-year-old mini Aussie. She's great. She used to do agility. She's a little bit older now, so she switched over to nose work. Um, she has lower back issues that I work on her, and then she gets better, and then with everything she does, she starts to have problems again. So. I want to talk to you guys about back problems and using the laser. If you just laser from the top, you're going to get the muscles 
but you're not really going to get the nerves or into the spinal cord and you're not going to get it really into the facet joints. You can say, well, do we really need to get the facet joints? Yeah, actually you do. Why? Because some of your facet joints, if you took an x-ray, would look like this and they're beautiful and they move and they're fine. And especially as they get older, a lot of them are like this. We have arthritis in there and you may treat the muscles, but if you're not getting the joint, then the dog's not moving as much. And then the muscles are going to have problems again. So if you treat the facet joint, you're actually fixing more of the root problem. So we can come. So this is behind. She had problems in her lumbar spine. This is the lumbar vertebrae. So that's her lower back. So behind the anticlinal, which is T11, our vertebrae are shaped like this, where our facet joints are at a 15 degree angle. So that means we don't want to be lasering straight down from the top. But if we come out at like a 15 degree angle, we're getting right in there. We're getting that whole joint. Isn't that awesome? We can help them. And because we're doing right into the spinal cord with a lot having to go through a lot less bone, which is really, really cool. Now, if we want to get rid of pain, besides just the spasm and the muscles and the facet joints, we can actually go in and get into the dorsal root ganglion. You go, dorsal, oh my gosh, from vet school. I remember that kind of. <laughs> I know a lot about it. Right here, this little bulb thing, that is where every nerve, so think about this. Every nerve from your skin and your knees and all of that go to the spinal cord. It's one long nerve to the spinal cord, lots of different branches. And then it touches to an inner neuron living vertebral frame in the dorsal root ganglion. From there, it mats up with some inner neurons, and then it goes into the spinal cord and up to the brain. And that's how you get pain perception. The inner neurons have the ability to either upregulate, create more pain, or downregulate, decrease pain as those impulses are coming into it. So we can laser into so that hole right here where we can go straight in get into the intervertebral foramen, the dorsal root ganglion, into the spinal cord. Isn't that awesome? How do we do that? We need to know where the intervertebral foramen is so we can aim for it. So here's my lumbar spine. And you can see that you have uh, transverse processes right here. If I line up my, my probe at the bottom of the door, uh, at the bottom of the processes, I will shoot right into the inner vertebral foramen and treat my dorsal root ganglion. Actually, I want to go back for one second because I want to show you, where's my picture of Sid? Because you're going to say, where is, how do you get to the, to the, um, to the dorsal root ganglion? If you look at Sid, if you come in, right, you follow his muscles around, you're going to get there. Actually, I have a picture later on. I can show you that too. So let's talk about Maggie. Maggie's awesome. Maggie gets the zoomies a lot. I see her every six weeks. Oh, actually, we are talking about Maggie. Uh, well, I do. I see her every six weeks. And one of my rules that I tell all my clients is if you're going to break your dog, break her just before you come see me, not the day after you leave. Unless you're like flying off to EO or the world team or something like that. And then I'll see them before you go and when you come back. All right. So for her, she starts to see clinical signs around week seven and eight. So I see her at week six. Question from Anna. Anna says, I use a K laser class four at work and I, I, not only treat the problematic areas, but also the compensatory limbs and the whole spine, as long as it's not contraindicated. Do you think it's a good idea to offer to treat the spine of the patients if, they, if I think they benefit? My answer is absolutely. Check this out, right? If you're treating the spine, and I recommend not directly on the midline, because that's my dorsal root, or I'm sorry, that's my dorsal spinous processes that are sticking straight up. But on either side, are all my acupuncture association points, my back shoe points. So if you're treating on either side of the, the backbone, you can get those. So you can actually have an effect on the whole body 
by treating the dogs back. It's a great idea, Anna. Good job. Her other question is, what do you think about a patient with heart murmur? Would it be contraindicated? And I would say absolutely not contraindicated. If anything, it's indicated. I pulled this research study because I'm a nerd and I like to pull research. Uh, it's just one of my little passions. This is brand new. So it's February of 2023, just a few months ago came out. The effect of low-level laser physiotherapy, so using laser to treat left ventricular function with patients with chronic systolic heart failure. Check this out. What, was, what were the conclusions? Low-level laser adds benefits to improve symptoms, clinical conditions, quality of life with these patients, and it's been shown to increase cardiac function, myocardial contractility, decrease blood pressure, and improve myocardial, coronary, and aerobic reserves. <sighs> it's a mouthful. Overall, it helps. So, oh, I have more people in there. Hi, D. Yay. So any patient that has cardiac issues, as long as it's not a heart-based tumor, laser may be very beneficial. So remember I said I'm coming up to a slide that had uh, shows you the importance of aiming? So if you guys can see this picture, that's my ankle. I broke my fibula in January, and I was traveling, and I was lucky enough to be able to borrow a friend's laser and put it on my ankle, and it was in the dark. And I'm like, this is perfect. I'm going to take this picture and show everybody. So here's my ankle. Here's me lasering it. But here's it blown up. It's a great example of when I laser a point directly under the diode, I get lots and lots of energy, right? A little bit out. It's a little bit change of color. Come out. It's a little bit left. Way out to here. So I can get all kinds of, of laser energy into this tissue, but the most is where I'm pointing my laser. Super, super important. The other half of John's question was who should be performing the laser therapy? Should it be the DVM, a physical therapist, the tech assistant client? And my answer is whoever is trained in it, right? So I don't want somebody just taking a laser and saying, I'm just going to wave this around and see what happens. But if you have training and you know what you're doing, it's an amazing tool. Now, my clients are amazing. I have creme de la creme clients. Their dog is not the dog. It is their four-legged child, right? Just like my kids are my four. My <laughs> When people ask me, Lori, how are your kids doing? I always ask, my two-legged kids or my four-legged kids? Because some of my friends only care about my two-legged kids and some of my friends only care about my four-legged kids. Uh, but my clients who have their four-legged kids, I'd say 70% of them have a laser. And then I work with them to be able to use it appropriately. And they're thrilled with it. Let's talk about Stanley. Stanley is 12-year-old mix. Mom adopted him recently, uh, within the last couple years. And her complaint was, oh, he's not really moving around a whole lot. No really avert lameness. But what I found out was that he didn't have a lameness because all four legs and his back hurts. So where was he sore? T5 to L7, his whole back. His both wrists, both his knees, he had medial buttress, so at some point he tore both cruciates, both elbows, and both hips. Now, I've worked with him four times, and I did acupuncture and chiropractic and laser therapy. That's all I'm doing with him. He doesn't like to do exercises. So this is his zoomies. This is his play. And Marcy, his mom, is thrilled with how well he's doing. She said neighbors on the street will actually stop her and say, oh, my God, Stanley's doing so much better. What are you doing with him? Which I love to hear. Right? It's just so heartwarming to know that we can change the quality of life in our, our pets and our patients. Stanley's awesome. Very, very handsome boy. He's playing. So what can I teach you about from Stanley? I'm going to go through the carpus or wrist. Super, super important. So this is a dog with laying down, not even with the compression of, of standing on it. But when his, when his wrist is an extension or straight, 
imagine trying to get laser into that the joint. What happens? You have to go through bone. And we know that some of our variables, some of our wavelengths don't go through bone very well. So you have to use lots and lots and lots of energy. It'll get there, but it takes a lot more time and a lot more energy. Check this out. All we have to do is bend that wrist and our where 80% of our motion is between our radius and our radial carpal bone, we get right in there and it stretches our joint capsule out. So if we look here, this is an inflamed joint capsule and the body has a hard time getting nutrition into the joint itself to allow the chondrocytes, the cells that make cartilage in here, to get nutrition and oxygen. But if we can decrease the inflammation in the joint capsule and the cells that make the inflammation are on the inside, so we make sure we want to get that, and then we open it up. Look, even down here, this joint is opened up. So one, we want to flex and even traction it a little bit. And we want to come around the accessory carpal bone. So think about the accessory carpal bone is sticking straight out. We want to come on either side in a circle to get that. It's amazing how much of a difference that will make when you're treating a dog with a wrist issue. And I'm telling you, I'm teaching you as much as I can in tonight, but it's a short amount of time. I want to be able to teach you guys as much as I can. So I want to tell you about optimum laser therapy. It's race approved for 20 hours. We go through things like with the bones. It's not just me in a little bubble. You get me. We have so much fun. And I can teach you all kinds of things. I've got Companion and um, SpectraVet and Respond as my sponsors. So we go through all the variables with them, what dosages and everything to help you guys out. You get life-changing outcomes. And you say, really, Lori? Yeah, you do. I promise you. And if you don't feel like you're getting a big difference, if you're not learning a lot, it's a money back guarantee. There's no risk. You get my tips, my secrets. You get over 25 videos on the fundamentals so that you can pick up any laser and go with it. You get over 25 different body areas. So it can be, how do I treat the lungs? How do I treat the ears? How do I treat the anal glands? Besides just the joints, it's all in there. So what's included? You have over 50 videos. You have a full year access. You have a community so you can ask questions. And there's we've been doing this for three years. So there's three years worth of questions that you can go through and say, oh, look, she asked the same thing I did. Or he asked the same thing I did. And this was the answer. Or I want more information. And you can say, you can say oh, there's quiz questions. Of course there is. It's race approved. But it's not just, here's a question. I seriously thought about what was the most important things for you guys to learn. And then I based my quiz questions around that. So when you answer the questions, it's re-putting things into your brain to make sure it stays there. There's actually over 125 different scientific references. And you get PDFs. I am a, a visual learner. So I want you guys to learn so badly. So it's auditory. You can hear it. It's visual. You can see it. And you can read it, which is really beneficial. You get a PDF of all the slides, and you get written transcripts, so you can follow along with it. And it's race approved, of course. So part one is all of the, the didactic stuff, all of the tutorial stuff that you need to know. There's like multiple sessions just on tips and tricks. There's cool things like nanoparticles and cancer. There's sports medicine, how to get the competitive edge. Are you, what's your goal? Are you looking for endurance? Are you looking for strength? There's, how do you laser for weight loss? What? Yeah, actually you can. You can increase the rate of weight loss by lasering your muscles before you go exercise. As well as rather than doing surgery to increase stem cells or do, drawing blood, you can laser. There's certain parts of the body that you can laser to release stem cells naturally. It's awesome, awesome good information. Part two, we go through over 25 different body parts where we say, okay, why do, what's going on in the body? What do we want to do? How do we do it? Grab a dog. Let's go through diagrams and bones and the dog and then grab the laser probe and put it all together. And I help you out with it. We also get this, the settings from the, our sponsor companies, which is wonderful. I'm going to read these to you. I promise it'll be short. There's only three of them. No, right, two, three, three of them. Um, 
that are some of the, the, the things that people have said that have just like totally warmed my heart. So Dr. Angel says, we offered the laser course to our entire team of nurses and doctors. It's made a huge difference in our comfort level about using laser therapy. Now our team feels very confident and they're seeing much better results from their treatments. Thank you, Dr. McCauley, for offering this course. It's made a huge difference in our use and success of laser therapy. Dr. Tran says, the video on hips are some of the best in an already excellent program. They put what passed as training, I, I, I'm sorry, they put what passed as a training program when we bought our laser to Shane. Thank you for putting this resource together. Their training program was about how to safely use the laser unit, which they did well. Your program is showing us how to best treat our patients with the current laser information we have. Unfortunately, many of us forget that the, that difference and assume that we know how to optimally treat our patients because we know how to operate the laser unit. Thanks, Tran. And then our last one from Annie. We love this course. It was worth every penny. Dr. Lori thought of everything, everything. She put the extra everything in, not me. She provided us with all that we needed to create an effective conditioning, I'm sorry, an effective condition-specific protocol, thoughtfully cho choose our next laser, and train a laser technician who now provides top-notch level care to our clients. We understand the hows and whys, which allows us to fine-tune our treatments and plans and get the best results possible. We were even able to standardize protocols between the different laser class, the different classes of lasers we have in our practice. I had high expectations of this course, and it exceeded every one of them. Thank you, Dr. Lori, for bringing this beautifully organized body of knowledge to our profession. You're a gem. Thank you, Annie. That makes me feel so good. And if you sign up before September 23rd, I feel like it's one of those commercials. But wait, there's more, right? I, I, I'm a giver, right? So I want to give you everything I can to help you make this a success. So if you sign up before the 23rd, there's anatomy images. So all the anatomy images you can print and laminate and keep with your laser. So as a reference, you've got it right there. You've got an indication chart, which can be a huge thing to help you remember to use your laser and to know what it's for. You say, well, why is that important? Because you have a list of who's coming in today. And your receptionist, your technician, yourself can go through and go, that might be, that may. And then you can check, oh, look, that's on the indication chart. Oh, that's on the indicate. Oh, that one's on. And then you put a little sticky note so that you remember, oh, we can laser this. And then it becomes a habit. Three to four weeks of that, and it's a habit. And I promise you, you'll be using your laser more. And then finally, if you're not used to using your laser or you're not sure what needs to be in for OSHA in your record, we have a template for you. So there's all the information. If you're computer-based, you can just download it and put it in. If you're paper-based, you can print it out, however you want to do it. It's right there for you. It's race approved for 20 credits. So that's like a whole year's worth in one course, right? And it has a money back guarantee. If in seven days you don't like it, just let us know. I want what's best for you. Why? Because I want you to treat your patients to the best of your ability to help every patient we can. So sign up tonight. You say, okay, Lori, I want to sign up. Yay, this is so exciting. How much is it? So normally it's $5.97. But before the 23rd, you can get $100 off if you sign up. So that's per person. If you say, well, Lori, but I've got, a, I want to do my whole clinic. I'm a doctor. I've got two techs. Perfect. We have for three people, you can actually get up to $125 off per person. And if you say, well, Lori, that's great, but I have more. I want more people to be able to do this. I have a big clinic. Our large clinic packages is for five, and you can get up to $140 off per person. So. Again, that's only until September 23rd at midnight. So make sure you sign up soon. Why now? Lori, this course is available all the time. Why should I sign up now? I want you to join me in my mission to help as many pets around the world as possible. So the best I can do is to teach you so that you can get the same results I do because I am so blessed to help so many animals. But I can only treat so many animals per day. So for every 10 people that I can teach what I do, 100 animals a day, right? So one pet at a time, we're going to make them better. I'm going to make you more efficient. Everybody needs more time, right? So you can get the same results, better results, better results, optimal results, quicker. You can use your laser all day long when you know how to use it appropriately and how often you can use it. 
You may even need another one. Or if you're thinking about purchasing a laser, our sponsors, Respond, Companion, and SpectraVet offer at least $500 off the laser, depending upon the company, which more than covers the cost of the course, right? So it's a no-brainer, right? It's it's win-win for everybody. And it increases your competence, which will increase your confidence. And I put the eagle in here, right? Because to me, that is like, maximum confidence and competence of, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to just have fun doing it. And that's what I want for you guys. Okay. More questions. Rachel is a pet parent. And she said, I have a 15 year old, 99 pound pit bull with osteoarthritis and stage two renal disease. Can you use the laser for renal disease? Absolutely. Every cat, every dog with renal disease should have laser therapy. She lost um, her pit bull's father at 15, at almost 16. He was 115 pounds. That is a big boy. She used to take them to her uh, vet for chiropractic, acupuncture, and cold laser, laser therapy. She didn't say if she was still doing that or not. She said she tried the TheraVet laser, and now she's got a MedcoVet laser, who's also one of our sponsors. Um, and immediately now, when she's lasering them, they get up and leave, Right. Tolerated it a handful of times, not a lot of consistency. What can you do to help me, Lori? I really want to be able to treat my babies. What I would say is you probably just did too much too fast. Been there, done that, right? One of the reasons I teach is because I have made all the mistakes, some of them multiple times, but then I can teach and you guys can learn from my mistakes. So if you put too much energy in, you may feel a buzzing, zzz, Literally, because I'm anal retentive, I used to, when I first started with laser back in 99, I would say I was using it for acupuncture, laser acupuncture for my patients that couldn't handle the needles. I would put my finger here, I would put the laser here, and I keep my finger right next to it to make sure it didn't move. And then after a while, I realized anytime the laser came near my finger, it would buzz. It was really uncomfortable. Um, I don't do that. But it took years for that feeling to go away. The other thing is soreness. I have done that too to myself. I'm like, oh, my calf is really sore after running. I'm going to laser it. And I lasered it and laser it and did too much. It was actually sore. And I'm like, huh, maybe that's what happens with some of our patients is we're putting too much energy in. And remember, what happens is we put this energy in and normally the blood heme is one of the things that absorbs it. Water is one of the things that absorbs it. So our blood pulls that energy away. So if our patients have, if they're super thin, right, which can be an athlete or it can be a fragile older dog, they don't have the fat that they go through. So we need less energy. If they're dehydrated, that we don't have the, the energy being pulled away, we need less energy. If they have decreased circulation, maybe they have a slow heart rate or uh, other reasons for decreased circulation, right? Maybe an injury, we need less energy. Otherwise, we can make them sore. And if they're old, they probably have all of these, right? A lot of our older fragile patients are thin. Uh, it's part of aging. We have less circulation um, and we are more likely to be dehydrated. So you definitely, some of my patients, I recommend going down to like half the amount of energy at least to get through the pain part and then even less energy. All right, let's talk about Levin. Levin is awesome. Levin is a four-year-old whippet who had tarsal instability. And we're going to turn the video on. As you see here, as she turns, you can see which leg she's not putting a whole lot of weight on. She has, see that thickening right there? She had seen multiple vets and they couldn't understand why she was lame. Um, Gail, her mom, brings me to me from the Raleigh-Durham area, so several hours away. And she actually tore her, her um, tarsal joint and potentially superficial or deep digital flexor tendon. Not all the way, but tore it enough that it's really painful and swollen and thick. We're trying to find somebody who has a, who's comfortable with a diagnostic ultrasound to see how much damage is done. But you can see she was pretty lame. And if we go through here, here she is four weeks later. She has a splint on. Mom happens to own a vet clinic, a doggy daycare, and a boarding facility. So she's like, oh, yeah, we'll just laser it here and we'll get it taken care of. So here she is walking with her splint on. 
um, so that we can allow that to heal without constant pressure on it. You see, she's walking much better. Um, she was lasering it once or twice a week. Literally, the first time I lasered it, that swelling went down to half the size, which was really cool. Super, super important. If you notice when she comes back, her toes are out. Why? Because anytime we have damage to the superficial digital flexor or deep digital flexor, we want to make sure that we can move them some, even though we're supporting the joint and the, um, and the, the top tendons. So we need her to be able to, in the comfort level of the dog, extend and flex the toes just a little bit to keep things moving because we don't want scar tissue to hold that down. Otherwise, we won't have any motion at all. That was a great case to share. So she'll be in a splint for 12 to 16 weeks. Then we'll go into a softer bandage. Um, and she's getting laser now one to three times per week. Whoop. You can see she still has her stirrups on. But this was, this was the second time I saw her before I even treated her. Look how much better she's doing. Isn't this great? Love it. Okay, laser outcome question from John. Do you think laser should be able to bring in the kind of return of investment that companies claim? Well, if you use your laser appropriately, yes, 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 yes. Okay. It is amazing. It's an amazing tool. It truly, truly is all the things. I wish I had a dollar for every time a client said, hey, doc, if I get on the ground, will you treat me too? Right? Seriously, I could like pay off my car, which would be great. I also think that if you use it appropriately, you may need to. I can tell you in 2017 when I owned Tops back in Chicago, our, our, in, our income from laser, we had two of them, was over $120,000. We had to put them in pink in our schedule because otherwise our, our receptionists were having a hard time because we'd have three, we're like we only have two lasers. We can't have three appointments at the same time. So well, who should it be? A lot. Every surgery, every dental. Think of every cat with stomatitis, any ears, any skin issues, believe it or not, anal glands. If you asked a client, hey, if I have to express your dog's anal glands and I have to stick my finger in their butt and squeeze it and they might scream and it's going to become uncomfortable, or I can laser it and potentially either do it from the outside or be it much, much, much more comfortable, do you think they would say yes, laser at first? Absolutely. And then, of course, osteoarthritis, lungs. The dog has inflammation or fibrous tissue in the lungs. It's great. Talked about releasing stem cells, kidneys, liver, bladder, even in surgery. If you're doing a surgery and you're doing an anastomosis or any kind of where the intestine is purple or there's um, bruising to the bladder, I have seen it go from purple to pink literally in a minute or two. It's awesome. All right. Question, question from Katya. Katya, I love your name. That is like so cool. She says, I have a dog. Uh, it's having an MRI on Monday for suspected intervertebral disc disease. They, the referring vet said they didn't want a laser until they could rule out cancer. If your vet thinks there's a potential for cancer, absolutely. Wait until we know that that's not in there. Then, as long as it's not, absolutely use the laser. It's wonderful. Um, and if they have to do surgery, laser afterwards. And because I'm certified in acupuncture and I can't not teach you, please find somebody who does acupuncture because it's wonderful. And again, super important. We want to be able to treat. If we have, here's our little damage to the, so here's our disc coming up, putting pressure on the spinal cord. We want to go be able to go right into the intervertebral foramen, wherever that is, to be able to treat that disc and that spinal cord. She said, what information do I need to decide if this laser is appropriate? As long as the person is trained in how to use laser, it's super important. It literally is why I teach, is so that more dogs can be helped. And then she said, thank you for all the amazing info you share and the smile you always present with it. It's always a pleasure to watch and hear you. Hearts and thank you. Oh, my God, that warms my heart so much. Thank you so much, Katia. It just, it's why I teach, right? I love being able to help people help dogs. Tiberius. Oh my God. I love this dog. Tiberius is a 10-year-old boxer. He has degenerative myelopathy. So we want to laser his thoracolumbar spine. He also has compensatory issues, right? He has a little bit of IVDD. He twists. His hips get sore. 
So what can I teach you when we're doing, when we're treating for it, for degenerative myelopathy, super important. We want to actually double the amount of energy we're putting into the spine compared to if we're just treating for intervertebral disc disease. We want to, so two different places, two different ways to get into the spinal cord. We talked a little bit about behind T11. Now I want to talk about in front of T11. Here is our ribs. Here is our intervertebral foramen, right? So here's head, neck. Here's our ribs. We want to feel where the ribs stop, right? This is all muscle. And we want to be able to shoot right in there. So we can treat right into the spinal cord. Now, we, if, there's, if there's muscle issues, we can treat from the top and get those muscle issues. But we also want to be able to treat right into the intervertebral foramen. All right, it looks like we have a question in the chat. Nancy, what can you do for suspected dog with d suspected DM dog with cancer. My rule with cancer is you don't treat over the cancer unless it's palliative. So what does that mean? So that means if my, if my patient has cancer and they're super painful because of the cancer, like bone cancer might be one of them and nothing else is helping. We know that the laser may increase the rate of the cancer growth, but if your option is, um, put them to sleep or make them more comfortable and know it's going to grow a little bit faster, I'm going to make them feel com more comfortable. You say, how do you know, Lori? I had a dog that had a mass, uh, a mass cell tumor that was the size of my fist. Then when they took it off, the dog, not my dog, my, my client's dog, the dog was really painful. They took big margins and it wasn't clean. So they had to go back and they scraped the ribs to get all of the, the mass cell tissue out as much as they could. And when they sewed the dog back together, the leg was stuck back here, right? Because it was over here in the ribs. And the, the clients literally came to me and they said, Lori, we're going to euthanize her because, you know, the kids are coming home from college. They're going to say goodbye. And I said, wait, 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 let's laser it. Let's just try and see if we can get her more comfortable. We had nine more months with her. We got her comfortable. Tumors came back. She had one more surgery. They actually had three tumors the next time. They took them off. Dog was doing great. And then all of a sudden, five tumors started to come up. But we had nine months, right? At that time, it was a long time ago, they weren't doing a lot of chemo. So this was what we had to help this dog. And it was amazing. So you kind of have to, comfort is key. Absolutely. Comfort is definitely key. So, and you have to make that decision, right? To me, it's never my decision to make. My, my job is to give you all, as my client, give you all the information I can to make an educated decision about what's right for your pet because they're your baby. So you're welcome, Nancy. Yay. See, this is why I love to teach. I hope I can help. All right. So if you're treating for DM and you're treating above T11, you're going to feel where the ribs stop and shoot straight in. Right? Again, you can get the muscle on top because there may be spasms and trigger points in there, but that's going to be the most important place to go. So behind T11, because we're going to get the whole thoracolumbar spine, we're coming in at our 15 degree angle and straight in. Oh, yep. Yeah. We're going to get both places. Okay, Hachi. Hachi, I'm, I'm helping long distance. He actually lives in California. He's a nine-year-old German Shepherd mix. He's 145 pounds. And if you say, well, he doesn't look that big because of the size of the person next to him, it's because the size of the person next to him is really big too. This is slow motion, and you can see he's lame, but you, he's not as lame as you might expect once you see his x-rays. I'll show you why in a second. So you can see his head bobbing. There we go. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling it. Ouch. Right? So there he's lame. Here's his x-rays. Talking about cancer, he has potentially bone cancer. We don't have a biopsy yet. Like, seriously, these are the cases I've seen since the 7th. But look at those x-rays. Why is he not more lame when he has that? Because look at his hip. Right? His diagonal lame, his left radius and his right hip are, are both ouchy. So in, if, his, if his hip was fine, he'd be more lame because he could pull his weight to his diagonal leg. But he can't because that hurts. 
So he kind of goes back and forth with his weight. Then he kind of moves kind of slow. No, that was slow-mo, but he does move slow. So that's Hachi. What can I teach you about with Hachi? I'm not touching the carpus. I'm not touching the radius. Well, his mom's a vet and she's got a laser. So she can decide if she wants to do that. But what I want to teach you is about the hip. In the hip. Oh, and I brought my hip. Well, my hip. But, right? I love teaching with things that I can hold in my hand and you can see. Here's a dog's hip. If I'm treating straight in, how am I getting that hip joint? I have to go through all of this bone to get in there. So doesn't it make more sense to be able to come in at an angle, right? Come in different places. Woo, there we go. So that I can actually get in there and treat the joint capsule, which is where the cells that make the inflammatory mediators, the bad guys live. And I can decrease the inflammation in there, decrease the pain and work on getting the cartilage. So anytime I treat a hip, I'm coming in at an angle. And if you know acupuncture, you're hitting this point and this point and this point, that's our hip triangle, right? So treating those points are actually stimulating acupuncture points to also decrease hip pain. Lots and lots of good things. All right. Why did I create optimum laser therapy? I am constantly asked, because I teach on laser, Lori, how do I? Or if I had X laser, what would my dose be? And people don't realize, that's like saying, I have a bladder infection. How many milligrams of an antibiotic should I take? Well, it's totally different if it's cephalexin or Batril or amoxicillin, right? You can't just say how many milligrams. You can't just say how many joules or how many joules per centimeter squared. It depends upon your variables. I also have people say, Lori, I'm not getting the same results with the laser. How come? It's because you don't have all the information. It's not that you're, you're doing anything wrong on purpose. We are going to give you the information so that you can get those results. So if you like this information, if you can't wait to try using it tomorrow and you want more, you can sign up for Optimum, uh, Optimum uh, Pet Vitality's Optimum Laser Therapy. Again, link is in the chat. There's lots of tips and tricks. There's two whole lectures on tips and tricks. And then more in each body area. I give you all kinds of information. I don't want you to get good results. I want you to get wow results, right? That's what makes me super happy. And it's the people that do that. Again, bonuses, indication charts that you can use if you, and the medical records that you can, you can get if you sign up before the 23rd. Um, and you get me, you get me talking to you just like this with my hands and keeping exciting and fun and three years of questions and answers in the community. And we answer your questions. So it's win, win, win. You get to maximize your patient outcomes, maximize your client satisfaction because they will drive. Literally, I have clients that drive from Texas. I'm in North Carolina to come see me. Lots and lots of clients that drive three or four hours from Raleigh, Durham area. I have some of my clients from Chicago who drive down to see me. I want you to have the same thing because I want you to be able to help the pets. Maximize your personal and job satisfaction. You get to come to work. You don't have to come to work because you make a difference in people's and dogs' lives. And you maximize your revenue. So sign up now. So any more questions, pop them in the chat. I'd be happy to answer anything if you've got cases. Uh, let's see. I'm going to read through the chat. Little spotty. Sorry about the sound if it went in and out. Um, anybody got have any questions? Come on. Someone's got to think of something. All right. I'll give it just a few more seconds. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you learned something. Oh, core body science, Pilates training, Studio Toronto. What about maintenance work on total hip replacement? Absolutely. Right? We, we can help strengthen those muscles. Right? So since you're a Pilates and training studio, this is perfect. Laser has been shown to increase both strength and endurance when used either before, after, or both. And it, believe it or not, strength and, and endurance are different settings, but it will help build the muscle. So you can get the glutes for total hip replacement. Most important, important are middle glutes, superficial glutes, deep glutes, and pectineus. Those are the muscles that help stabilize that joint. So absolutely, I would recommend it. And in, 
Tetrapretic dog, any advice? Oh, depends upon the cause. Um, certainly, if there's any pain, you can use it. If there's any inflammation, we can use it. it depends upon how long the dog's been down. Uh, hearing tetrapretic, I think it's probably a cervical issue. So if they're shortly down, absolutely. Again, I would add acupuncture too. Um, but certainly, and get those muscles moving. If you can get them to even stand a little bit, or you bounce them, or you stimulate by brushing them, or your electric toothbrush, or whatever it is, it can help them. It can help those nerves regen regenerate if they're going to regenerate. All right, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. I'll see you next time. And if you purchase a course, I'll see you in the, you're welcome, Nancy. I will see you in the community. Take care.